last class we did about uniform wall temperature. Now, in this particular class, okay, we are going to start the start a little bit of a more complex problem which has got elements of both uniform wall and uniform uh, wall temperature and uniform heat flux. This is basically a tube surrounded by isothermal fluid. So, situation is something like this. This is once again the tube with R and X. The wall temperature of the tube is T naught which is not specified. The temperature of the external fluid right is specified. So, this is the temperature of the external fluid that is given as constant. Now, imagine this to be a situation in which a tube is placed in some kind of a you know heat transfer fluid. So, it is typical heat exchanger type of a problem. There is an external fluid which through external convection is actually taking away the temperature. So, there is a hot fluid going inside the tube okay. that hot fluid is transferring heat to an external fluid which is outside the tube right. Right now in the previous classes we are only concerned that there is a uniform heat flux or a uniform wall temperature. We are not concerned what happens outside the tube right. We always thought that the wall temperature was kept constant by some means or there was a uniform heat flux uh, that was supplied along the tube wall. Okay. This is more realistic in nature that this particular tube which has which is carrying some hot fluid is placed inside a large you know convective medium of some other external fluid whatever that external fluid is can be the same fluid can be a different fluid also right. So, it becomes a typical heat exchanger kind of a problem. Okay. So, it is neither a constant wall temperature neither it is a constant heat flux condition right. Whatever however, the external bath is so huge right it is like a reservoir large reservoir that that T infinity of the external fluid is kept constant. So, that means the external fluid is not varying in temperature understood. So, it is like a large ocean. So, it is what we call typically a thermal reservoir right that temperature is not changing because T infinity value is very large uh, I mean the, the thermal inertia is very large. But however, uh, the wall and the uh, and whatever is the wall temperature and the heat flux at the wall on the tube is therefore, varying okay, because that we cannot assume to be constant. Okay. So, similarly, so here Q double prime is given by some kind of a He some external convection coefficient. So, it is T infinity minus T naught right T infinity minus T naught okay, where T naught obviously will be a function of x in this particular case right okay. and neither is Q double prime is a constant in this particular case. So, let us assume a few things that the flow is fully developed that has nothing to do with uh, anything right the flow is fully developed that means x is uh, greater than the max of x t and x h you know what x t and x h are right. Okay. So, we are defining Nusselt number define Nusselt number this is a little bit of a strange definition of Nusselt number t infinity minus t m into d by k right. What is t infinity? t infinity is the external fluid temperature right. T m is the mean temperature of the flow inside the pipe right. So, this definition of Nusselt number is very different is previously you had T naught minus T m right or you had it in terms of the Q double prime right. This is very different that is because our Q double prime is defined in a very different way also right. So, therefore, let us take T is equal to T infinity minus T infinity minus T m into G r bar. Okay. So, this is the definition that we are putting forward okay. and this is the expression that we are casting the T that is the temperature is as a function of T infinity and T m and it is this total expression is a function of R only okay. like in our fully developed regime these are the things that we did. In addition we say that the tube wall thickness is negligible. 
So, that means this avoids the complication that there will be a drop inside the wall ok got it and therefore, its thermal resistance is also weak. So, there is no thermal resistance of the wall ok a wall is negligible ok. It is just uh, because if it is a thick wall you have to also take into account the thick wall effect ok. So, we are discounting all that also your d t m by d x is given by 2 r naught q double prime rho c p u this is the average axial velocity right this is the average axial velocity once again this this definition is once again the same as what we had earlier right ah, that whatever we had in our previous class. Now, let us cast this problem that means, we first write the energy equation. Once again I make it a habit that you write the energy equation even though this has been written countless number of times just that you guys get a feel ok of writing the same equation again and again. So, once again this is the same flow field right because u is accurately solvable ok. So, therefore, you get this ok or right ok ok just by using our own definition ok. Now, individually d square t by d r square is given as t infinity minus t m g double prime r bar 1 minus g naught r naught square. Similarly, the first derivative and r is obviously r naught into r bar. These few things are given right given as a. Uh, so, I have not done anything funny over here except my definition of temperature and my definition of q double prime I have tweaked them according to the problem. That means, I have involved the external temperature field into the picture because that is the one that is constant right and the Nusselt number definition has changed a little bit. Okay. So, based on that I have started working on this particular problem ok. So, in other words if you cancel a few terms then you will get g double prime bar right. We need several boundary conditions. So, g prime bar is equal to 0 at r bar is equal to 0. Why that will be the case? Let us uh, revisit the situation that what was uh, our definition of g that means your t was equal to t infinity minus t infinity minus t m ok into g r right ok. So, y g bar g r will be or g prime r will be equal to 0 at r equal to 0 that is given by the by the axisymmetry of the temperature profile right. So, this boundary condition you can easily make out ok, but what about the other boundary condition because at the wall you do not have a boundary condition properly now right because of your definition because you have t infinity now. You cannot say when r is r bar is equal to 1 you will have g going to some other, some value ok you cannot say that ok. So, let us uh, recast it in a certain way define something called a biot number ok he r naught by k right he is the external heat transfer 
coefficient right h e r naught by k. So, that is the perfectly valid definition of the b naught number right. Okay. So, b i into g bar is given as t infinity minus t divided by t infinity minus t infinity mean. Okay. Got it? So, similarly b naught number at g r bar at r bar equal to 1 right that is given as h e r naught by k okay, t infinity minus t naught divided by t infinity minus t m. Okay. Okay. So, that is what we have similarly uh, <coughs> at r bar equal to 1 k d t by d r at r equal to r naught is exactly given as h e t infinity minus t naught right. Okay. That is nothing but your q double prime right. That is also equal to your Nusselt number t infinity minus t m into k by 2 r naught right. So, if I now do a little bit of manipulations on this. right okay which is nothing but if you are not okay r bar is equal to 1 right so you got your definitions right of that what will be your uh, g prime at r bar equal to 1. Okay. You also got the definition of what is going to be your g bar. right? By introducing this basic definition of biot number, this is biot number. right? By using this basic definition of biot number in this particular case. Okay. So, now let us define something else also. Let us make it a little interesting let us define Nusselt number prime something called a Nusselt number prime which is basically q double prime t naught minus t m into d by k. This is basically what we call the duct side Nusselt number right because this uses the conventional definition of t naught minus t m this is the definition that you are most familiar with right. Recall that your Nusselt number is basically t infinity minus t m into d by k correct. Okay. So, therefore, 2 by Nusselt number is equal to 2 t infinity by t m divided by q double prime k by 2 r naught. 2 by Nusselt number prime is basically 2 t naught minus t m divided by q double prime k by 2 r naught right right okay on the other hand your biot number 1 over biot number is basically k by h e into r naught which is basically k by r naught t naught minus t infinity by q double prime right or in other words okay 2 by n u prime plus 2 by n u you just add the two together right it will come out as k r naught q double prime t naught minus t m minus t infinity plus t m right or in other words it will come out to be minus k r naught into q double prime t naught minus t infinity which is nothing but 1 over the b naught number okay which is nothing but 1 over the b out number got it okay so in other words 
what we can write over here is that 2 by Nusselt number prime plus 2 by Nusselt number is basically equal to 1 over Biot number in this case, got it, okay. So, the final equation that needs to be solved in all these things is basically minus 2 Nusselt number 1 minus R bar square in G R bar is no different than the expressions that we had earlier, right, okay. With subject to the boundary conditions G bar at R bar equal to 0 is equal to 0, G bar at R bar at R bar equal to 1 is equal to Nusselt's number by 2, okay. Two particular uh, definitions we have. Now, solve this problem. This basically is an eigenvalue problem. So, solve this eigenvalue problem. numerically okay numerically to get the answer now there are two limiting conditions that are strictly possible uh, for this particular case right okay so what are those limiting conditions okay so let us bef before we spend a lot of time discussing it let us look at that if your biot number is basically let us write down the most uh, common definition of Biot number, this is this, right. So, in the limit that Biot number goes to infinity, right, Biot number goes to infinity, okay, that would imply, this would lead to the T naught must be equal to T infinity, right, okay. So, this basically means that T naught is equal to constant. Right. So, in this particular case, the Nusselt number n u prime, right, which is the basically the duct side Nusselt number, that value should be equal to 3.66 in the limit that Biot number approaches infinity, right. Let us take the condition when Biot number approaches 0, right, which implies that H e r naught by k is much, much less than 1, correct. Okay. So, this also implies very poor okay, thermal contact, right. So, in other words, T naught minus T m in that particular case is locally independent of x, right, it is locally independent of x. And T naught minus T m is locally independent of x corresponds to a uniform heat flux case, right. Because if you recall in your uniform heat flux, you had this lines which were parallel, this difference was always constant regardless of x, at any x the difference will be the same. So, when they are locally independent of x, okay, that means when biot number is much, much less than 1, okay, it is controlled by heat flux or in other words this becomes a uniform heat flux case that means the Nusselt number at Biot number approaching 0 right will approach the this is Nusselt number prime basically Nusselt number of Q double prime equal to constant right that means it will be equal to 4.36. So, that will be the value of Nusselt number that you are going to get when once you have this kind of a mediation understood. So, uh, we can see that these are the two limiting conditions and in between you will have any value these are the two bounds right 4.36 is one bound and 3.66 is the other bound right 0 and a very high number right. So, in between all other Nusselt number values will be packed in between. So, we can see that when we actually did the uniform heat flux and the uniform temperature we basically covered these two these two extreme ends. The actual situation is like a uh, pipe in an isothermal fluid, right. So, that in between Nusselt number whatever may be your configuration will lie somewhere in between, right. So, that is the that is an important case to note over here, right, okay. okay. Uh, points to note. 
okay, in here. Okay. So, H E what we said over here is the external conductance, do not confuse it with H. Okay. H is basically the internal conductance, got it? This is a simple error that you try to make that is internal and external, right. Okay. So, uh, external conductance and internal conductance are very important. Just keep that thing in mind because sometimes things might get a little uh, jumbled up. Okay. Some general points to note is that the existence of fully developed T, T profile okay, does not require require assumption of large Peclet number. Note it down properly. It does not require the definition that the Peclet number has to be has to be very large, right? Okay. Okay. But however, uh, so th this is one of the key assumption. It does not require the assumption that the of the large Peclet number. However, Nusselt number equal to constant do come from that large Peclet number assumption. Okay. It do come from that large Peclet number assumption. Okay. So, based on this, okay, let us uh, we can also draw a couple of profiles over here. Say, for example, uh, in the case of uh, high, high Biot number case. So, this is your T infinity, look at it carefully. This is almost like what your T wall looks like, right, and your T mean kind of curls up in this particular way. So, this is when the Biot number okay, is approaches uh, infinity or in other words H e is much much greater than k over r naught, right. That means, the external conductance is very high, right. That is what you would have. That means, there is no gradient between the external fluid in the external fluid because if you recall, if, if you recall your uh, example that when we said that you have this typical problem like a sphere immersed suddenly in a uh, large thermal reservoir. What we say that when we do not have to take the thermal gradient within the sphere, we tell that when Biot number is much much less than 1. This is the opposite to that, that if Biot number is very high, that means there is no thermal gradient on the surface of the sphere with the external fluid, right. It is almost like that is that heat transfer is like kind of instantaneous, but there will be substantial gradient that will be created inside the sphere. Right. So, that is essentially if you look at it this essentially means that there is no real temperature gradient between uh, T infinity and T naught both are basically the same in a way, but therefore there is a high temperature gradient within the fluid which basically corresponds to the uniform wall temperature case. Okay. Similarly, you have the other situation this is T infinity. So, this is actually your T naught this is actually your T m. They are, so here H e is less than k over R naught. So, whatever happens in the external fluid we do not really care, okay, because our internal conductance is very high. right? So, it is always controlled, it is not controlled by x, it is basically controlled by the heat flux and that is exactly what we have drawn over here. Okay. So, that is I think the, the two grand definition. Okay. And uh, if you look at any other uh, fluid flow, you can refer to figure 3.12 of uh, Bejan convective heat transfer. There you will find that uh, one would give you the flow that means the Nusselt number variation with Biot number. Here we have drawn the two extreme cases. There they will show you for the for a Purcell flow which is basically the flow that we are most concerned with okay, for that kind of a flow that what will be the value of your Nusselt number. right? So, figure 3.12 of Bejan can be looked at, looked for Nusselt number values for any or here it is Nusselt number prime for any Biot number. Remember Bejan in the Bejan's book that the Nusselt number is cast in a different way. 
Okay, so you should once you do it, you should keep in mind that what is the actual definition of Nusselt number, right? How he has defined it and how we have defined it as a part of this particular course, right? So, in other words, uh, Bejan's uh, 3 point figure 3.12 should be looked at uh, very, very carefully, right? Okay. So, and we will also share that particular figure with you in the next class, okay. We will start it there and uh, we will also show you the, the the Nusselt numbers with the for the different configurations that means the cross sections. Those are mainly for handbook purpose, okay. Because actual solving of this equation requires a little bit of effort, right, but you can still take a take a quick look. But all we can say that it varies from 0.436 to 3.66, so that is the variation, that is the limit of variation of your actual Nusselt number, that is the duct side Nusselt number, it will always remain within these two bounds, okay. So, that is, uh, but also we would like to pose a question that why is the Nusselt number for uniform heat flux higher, consistently higher for any cross sections as we saw than the corresponding Nusselt number for a uniform wall temperature, why is that the case? This is an open question that we are throwing open in this particular class and we will give the answer uh, a little later. But uh, the students can start to think about that uh, why is that the case, why this is consistently higher and we saw all other Nusselt numbers seems to stack up in between these two limits that is 4.36 and 3.66. So, what is the reasoning behind it, okay, if, if there is any re re reasoning that is. So, I think spend some time looking into this, in the next class we are going to start looking at heat transfer to developing flow. So far we have looked at heat transfer in the, in the, in the fully developed regime. And we have also looked at the hydrodynamically fully developed and we know what are the situations that are possible. Let us look at the developing flow regime and try to see what we can extract out of that. Many of the equations are basically not solvable in their full, uh, I mean not solvable uh, in a class, but you can always try, you can have numerical methods, you can have other uh, sophisticated mathematical techniques by which you can solve it, okay. But this is just to give you an essence that what is the key physics, okay, behind this kind of flow configurations, okay. As uh, discussed in the last class, we decided that we will show that uh, how the Nusselt number uh, and the friction factor for uh, uh, laminar flow, okay, with regular polygonal cross sections should vary. So, this is what you have. So, for there are two limits, one is uniform heat flux, one is the isothermal wall. As we can see for the fully developed flow, Okay, so forget about the slug flow portion, we are going to come to that a little later. For the fully developed flow as you can see for uniform heat flux and for isothermal wall, these are the corresponding values of the Nusselt number moving from square to circle, okay. So, as you can see as we increase the number of sides that means we move closer to a circle, circle is almost like an infinite uh, polygon, right. So, as we move closer to a circle as you can see the Nusselt number increases that is the heat transfer coefficient also increases for both isothermal wall as well as for um, uniform heat flux case, okay. So, from 3.6 all the way up to 4.3 we move and here from 2.98 all the way up to 3.66, okay. This two as you we, we did the math and we showed that 3.66 and 4.364 were the two limits, okay. Similarly, you can also look at the friction factor which is basically the from comes from the hydrodynamics, okay. There also as you can see that the friction factor actually increases a little bit, okay, as we move uh, towards from a square to a circle, okay. So, that is one and uh, if you recall in the last class we said that uh, when you actually have a uh, cylinder placed in an isothermal uh, reservoir, right, with T infinity was equal to constant if you recall, okay. So, we did that and we kind of showed that uh, for that particular thing there are two limits which exist if you recall, Biot number approaching infinity, Biot number approaching 0, right. And we said that those two number values lies between 4.36 and 3.66, right. So, this graph effectively shows that particular thing, right. So, this is basically what we call the duct side Nusselt number. Okay, recall this graph is taken from Bejan. 
So the nomenclature is a little different. What Bejan uses as NU prime, I have used it as NU. So there is a little bit of uh, what we call a little bit of ambiguity, okay, um, between these two, okay, the Nusselt number. But the Nusselt number, this NU is basically the duct site Nusselt number in this particular graph. I have used NU prime, okay, and I have used a, instead of uh, NU hat, what they have used, I have used NU in my derivation. So, just be, be a little careful when you actually look at and read the graphs. Okay? So, as you can see here very clearly it goes from uh, 4.36 to 3.66 and you should look only into the Purcell flow profile not the slug. Okay? Uh, what is slug we will come a little later, but as of now this particular graph you can see that these are the two limits okay? for a wide variety of uh, Biot number. This is the Biot number that we have. As you can see, Biot number 100 is uh, very high, that is it mimics the Biot number uh, approaching infinity and 0 0.1 is actually a low enough Biot number. So, you can take that to be the Biot number to be equal to um, a very low value. Okay. So, based on these two things, you have these two limits that uh, we have established in the last class where we have shown that this is the way the Nusselt number, the duct site Nusselt number should vary. Okay. This is of course, the, the, the external Nusselt number okay, which was based on a NU that we wrote in our previous lectures. So, that varies in this particular way okay, as you can see from this particular graph. Okay. So, this basically completes our discussion, the pending discussions that we had. Okay, and uh, we have now given graphically as well as in the form of a table that how these constants will vary, what will be the nature of these profiles and remember all these equations were basically solved in a numerical fashion. Okay. So, now we will uh, go back to our uh, thermally developing flow and try to understand that how thermally developing flow actually varies. So, you go to that particular part.